So, there are exactly two days before Christmas. And guess who's attempting to make another ball gown? This person. Because what I told myself this year when Christmas break started is that I was gonna relax and I was gonna rest and I was gonna take a break from everything that made me stress. But no, because I completed one ball gown in four days, my brain has tricked itself into thinking I can complete one in two days now. So this is a video of me attempting to recreate Belle's Enchanted Ball Gown Dress from the Belle's Enchanted Christmas movie. We're gonna see how this goes, but let's go ahead and get started. I hope you enjoy this video. If you are new here, I do a lot of sewing, traveling, and eating food all over the world. And this is by far one of the most harebrained ideas I have come up with yet. Let's go on this crazy journey together. Okay, so I know you've seen the original Belle design that I showed earlier in this video, but here is my version of Belle's dress, and it features a lot of the same things that you see in the original design. The only difference is I added a little bit of decorative trim on the cuffs, a little bit more in the center, and I added this lace on the bottom. Now here is the bodice close up. I also decided to add a little bit more decorative material in the front portion of the bodice just to highlight the center off a little bit and I added a bunch of different trims instead of just having a singular line down the center like you see in the original. If you couldn't tell, this video is already kind of going to be a little bit interesting. The skirt pattern we're going to be using is the same as the holiday dress that I made. The funny thing is I can't actually show you what it looks like because I lost the packaging in this pile of chaos. So bear with me, but it's the same skirt pieces. I'll document the actual pattern in the description when we're done. So for the materials I'm using for the skirt, for the underskirt portion, I'm using this checkered gold material. Now I'm gonna have to be strategic with this because there is not enough to actually make the full skirt using the pattern pieces available. So what I will be doing is I'll be making the skirt front pieces out of this, but for the skirt back, I will be using this crepe material I used from the holiday dress. For the drapes, I'm using this dark burgundy fabric, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the pieces out at the same time, just so things go easier. Comparing it to the last video, the only difference between this and the underskirt is that the skirt front panel will be folded in about halfway to allow you to see the skirt underneath. You know the irony is I'm making drapes out of drapes, and these are stinking heavy. I forgot that these are like those blackout curtains you use like in really bright places all over the world. Anyway, they are dense. So if this skirt makes me fall over, you're not allowed to laugh too hard. I may end up walking like this. I don't know, maybe I'll be a jingle bell. Sorry, my puns are horrible. Anywho, let's go ahead and cut this out before I go too crazy with this project. <laughs> My wrist hurts so bad. <sighs> if it hasn't already been a long day enough, I've already been editing for a couple other videos and now I'm just getting started on a new dress. We love that. Whose idea was this? <sighs> okay, now that I've cut all the skirt pieces out, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew the red layer together and then sew the underskirt together and then I'll meet you back once they're finished. Ta-da! Don't question the wrinkles. Yes, I know they're there. But I think what I can do is hide them behind the back of the skirt and then it'll be fine and no one will notice. Anyway, the last thing we need to do is sew the seam up to the top and leave about 12 inches worth of gappage for the zipper, and then we're gonna go ahead and decorate and trim the drapes. So to hem the underskirt, instead of doing a literal hem, I wanted to add this lacy curtain underneath it just because it's really pretty and I think it will add on to the Beauty and the Beast holiday vibes. Okay, 
right, so the next thing we're gonna do with this chaos creation is add this gold snowflake trim on top so that it looks a little bit cleaner and less messy. Now, I don't think I have enough to go all the way around, so we are just going to pretend the back does not exist. As long as I don't lift my skirts up, I think we'll be good. Here is what the underskirt looks like, and now that this is finished, we're gonna go ahead and start trimming the drapes. Okay, so as far as trimming is concerned, I'm gonna go ahead and use this gold strip underneath this dark red velveteen. On top of that, I'm gonna put a red ribbon, and then kind of smushed in between that is gonna be this brocade, and then on top of that is gonna be this braided ribbon. Guess you split their finger open just trying to cut a seam. I can't feel my finger <laughs> right now, so we're gonna see how complex this makes sewing. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and hem the base of the drapes and then attach them to the underskirt. Finally, to finish the skirt, I'm gonna add a zipper. Here is the finished skirt. Now we get to do the bodice. Okay, for the bodice, we're using pattern 5935 by Butterick. For the lining of this bodice, we're gonna go ahead and use this tiny little remnant from my holiday dress. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these pieces out and sew the basic lining together, and then I will meet you back to attach the boning casing and the boning. So I just finished the lining and now I'm going to go ahead and add the boning casing and the boning. Alrighty, here is the fully boned bodice. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the overlay. Okay, so for the overlay of the bodice, we're going to use this variety of different red velveteens. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces out like I did the lining, sew them together except for the side fronts and the center front of the bodice which have to be trimmed and decorated. Okay, let's go ahead and go do this and I'll meet you back once we're finished. current plan for trimming the bodice so I'm using a mixture of trims like this gold one right here then for the center to create that line that you see in the original costume I'm just using this gold with this white underneath and then finally I'm adding the same trims I used for the skirt on the sides and I'll meet you back once it's finished trim bodice. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the lining and sew both of them together. Okay, here is the finished bodice. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and sew the straps together and go ahead and hem the side off using some of this leftover gold. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that when I was cutting out the back pieces, I went ahead and kind of cut the pieces along the line of a zippered pillowcase so I could have an easy closure. Okay, so now that the main body of the corset is done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the sleeves. Okay, for the sleeves, we're gonna use pattern 9713. So we're gonna use the sleeve piece and the drapey piece. We are so close to being done with this project and tomorrow bright and early, um, after a little bit of work to do, we're gonna go ahead and drive up to Mannheim's Baroque Palace, which is perfect for this reveal. Anyway, for the sleeves, I'm gonna go ahead and use this molten mess of leftover fabric that I used to trim the bottom of the underskirt. And then I am gonna try to figure out if I can either use the material I used for the skirt or use that velveteen I used for the bodice. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces out, sew them together, and I'll meet you back once the sleeves are done. Now that I've sewn the sleeves together, I'm gonna attach them to the side of the corset. For some final touches, I'm gonna go ahead and add this lace and this trim. So here is our finished bodice, and now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the bow. 
Now, the final step to this project, which isn't super obvious at first glance when you see the reference photo, is that Belle has a giant gold bow on the back of her dress. Now, the pickle is... <laughs> I have a lot of pickles in my projects, if you've noticed. Um is that I don't have enough gold material. So what we're gonna attempt to do is combine this being the center of the gold bow. So you'll see mostly gold, but I thought it would be super cool to kind of make it a duotone bow to kind of throw out that gold a little bit more. I don't know if that's the right way of phrasing it. Anyway, so the gold is gonna be on the main front of the bow. I thought it would be super cool to use the fabric I had from my holiday dress and combine that behind it it's gonna be like a sailor bow. That's kind of the idea I'm looking at. So unfortunately, all I had time for was to speed film all of this, so I won't be describing how I make it, but hopefully in the future, I will be able to post a full-length video on how I created this bow. Anyway, let's go ahead and put it together and I'll meet you back when it's time for the reveal. <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like or subscribe or even share it i love showing what i make with other people anyway what i forgot to mention at the beginning of this video is that this dress actually has a lot of meaning to me because one christmas when i was really little um i ended up getting a disney princess play castle and inside was a figurine of Belle in her enchanted ball gown. For years, she was my favorite character whenever we would play games. So this video has been an opportunity to fulfill a childhood dream of mine. So I hope that in 2024, all of you will be able to fulfill some form of dream of yours. And I hope you enjoy the final result of this project. So let's go ahead and see the result. <laughs> <laughs> 